it seems like there's this infantilization and simultaneous feminization of our societies and yeah. cultures and politics, actually. That really seems to be what's going on. I think that's the shift from individuality to collectivism, um, you know, intense push for quote unquote political correctness beyond beyond a reasonable amount, right? We're not just yeah. saying, hey, don't don't cut don't scream racial slurs at people, but you know, people wanting to redefine every single word, wanting to have safe spaces and trigger warnings and everything is offensive and everything is toxic. You know, men men just talking, just us having this conversation, you know, this is some type of unhealthy or dangerous yeah. interaction. It's all wrapped in the safety language. We need to keep everyone safe, safe, safe. It's not about freedom, liberty, responsibility, rights, you know, equality of opportunity. It's no, 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 we need, we need equity. Everyone needs to get the same thing. Um, in fact, we need to silence people and censor people who even dare ask questions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a man acting like a man or a boy acting like a boy is toxic, but at the same time, women should be acting like men. It's like there's, it's, it's just like there's hundreds of these narratives out there all at once, but you're kind of hitting the population. And I think it's, I mean, I think it's literally driving people insane. Like, I think people are genuinely becoming mentally ill mm -hmm. and are having all sorts of issues and identity issues and confusion. And some of it doesn't surprise me because identity itself just seems to be under under attack. Like, people don't even know who they are anymore. I think young boys are growing up in the world wondering, I mean, you know, what What does it even mean to be a boy? What does it even mean to be a man? Uh, women are growing up, you know, the, the question of what a woman even is, mm -hmm. is now is now in question, it's a question yeah. right? It, it's, it's, all, it's all being undermined. So I think there's just a lot of confusion, especially amongst younger people when I, when I talk to them or see them interacting online. And it just seems like they don't really know their, their place in the world. Um, I think if you're a 16 or 17 year old boy or girl in this world right now, it's not that clear what your path in life is supposed to be. It, you know, for all its flaws in the past, it was very, it was always clear. It's always clear, okay, you're a man, this is what you do. You're a woman, this is what you do. And if you do these things, you will, you know, you're almost not guaranteed, but you have a very high probability that you're going to find, uh, you know, you're going to attract a mate and you're going to have a family and it's going to just generally work out. Whereas now it's like there's all these different paths you can take and there's all these mixed signals. And I don't know, it just seems like very, it, it seems very deranging. I'm, I'm quite glad to not be, I don't know, 20 years younger than I am in this world right now. Yeah, it's funny. I was thinking about this the other day because it always seems like our parents' generation and our grandparents' generation would say things like, well, I grew up in the best generation. and Maybe that was right for them, but I thought about it the other day. Maybe it's my age you know, at this point, but I really think that I had one of the best childhoods that I could possibly have, You know, the best experiences at that period of uh, time compared to today. Like I... Uh, you know, I feel sorry for some of these kids. Um, you touched on a lot of things there. And it's like, I get exactly what you're saying. And it's difficult to have these conversations. And it's strange, you know, Zuby, because I've followed you for the last year or two, I think, on Twitter. And you're one of the nicest guys when it comes to approaching these conversations from a balanced perspective, logical. Um, and people still come at you pretty hard, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not quite as nice as you sometimes on Twitter, yeah. but that's just me. Um, but yeah, there is a general feminization of the West. Uh, it's, it's softening the Western male. There's a lot of things that contribute to it. I mean, you could spend hours talking about what's going on and how that's going on. Um, there, there's everything from estrogenics placed in environmental foods, packaging, and even in tap water, there's estrogen in tap water, uh, to just the way people behave as a result of culture and media and marketing, all that sort of stuff. I mean, I never lived in a time where I've seen so many men want to transition to become women. And to me, that's the ultimate expression of the feminization of culture, men wanting to change their actual gender to the other gender. Mm. Um, so it's a bizarre thing to behold, but it's, it's a reality of the world that we live in today. That's, that is the loudest possible message that young boys and men are hearing today. Um, is be softer, be kinder, be be all of these things that r really men aren't. I mean, if you look at boys in their natural habitat, like if you look at a four, five, six year old boy, that's about as alpha as you know most <laughs> men ever get today. 
right? Like they'll yeah. like they'll go to the sandbox and pick up a handful of sand and just whip it at somebody for fun because <laughs> you know they want to dominate or whatever. They'll you know they'll be on their bicycle and they'll try like high speed runs at things. Like when we were kids, we used to build ramps and jump and do all these kinds of mm -hmm. weird things. And it's like that's what that's what boys do or or did naturally, you know, to sort of compete and test you know test one another. Um, but that's not encouraged anymore. It's, you know, participation ribbons for everybody. There's no first place, last place. There's, uh, it, you know, we live in strange times, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we, we really do. And it's fascinating you said that because, you know, I'm not a father yet, but I, I'm an uncle of 10 and I'm blessed to have five nephews and five nieces. Wow. And for all the people who think that these gender differences are just socially constructed, like, They're please, not. honestly, ha hang out with some children, <laughs> go, go to a, go to a nursery school, just watch their behavior. Um, the boys and girls are different and oh, totally different, diff totally different interests. <laughs> yeah. And the, and the difference is it's not just okay. It's good. Yeah. It's this is the thing fine. that we, that's the thing that we've gotten away from. It's like, people are trying to solve problems that are not problems to begin with. Right. I, <laughs> maybe, I sometimes have, <laughs> maybe we have too much peace. You know, one of the things yeah. I've come to accept and realize about humanity is that we're, we're a warring primate. You know, we really are. We're, we're very similar to chimpanzees, you know. Chimpanzees will actually go out and wage war on neighboring tribes that might be infringing on their territories. And, you know, I was looking at this um, infographic once, and it basically had, you know, big, big, long timeline and a peppered series of dots of wars around the world. And it's recently, like in the last hundred years, you know, essentially, you, you know, setting aside the Second and First World War, we live in one of the most peaceful times in history. And it almost seems like we have easy access to nutrition, easy access to transportation. We have easy access to anything that they didn't have to deal with a thousand years ago. They had real struggles back then. And maybe all this spare time created this. I don't know. It's difficult to put my finger on it, but it seems, it seems clear as day that it's going on. Yeah, you're, you're correct. We, we live in this world of paradoxes. I mean, I would say that the things that seem to be becoming less accessible to people are meaning and purpose mm -hmm. and genuine community, right? I mean, loneliness is at an all time high. Uh, people are having fewer children and forming fewer families than yeah. ever before. Mental illness is at an all time high, self harm, suicide, like all these, all these things, obesity. I mean, if you look at the West, the thing that's fascinating is what's happened is, uh, and you, you sort of touched on this, but the majority of the social problems are now a result of excess. Yeah. So in, in most of the world and all throughout human history, the problem was always lack, right? There mm -hmm. was, there were just, there wasn't enough to go around. There wasn't enough resources. Uh, you know, there were, there were famines and droughts and pestilence and people didn't have medicine. Women were dying in childbirth, right? It was always, the problem was always lack. Yeah. If you think of all the stuff we're talking about, it's actually the result of so much comfort, so much excess that, I mean, you know, no one in the, no one in the USA is starving. How mm -hmm. many people are eating themselves to death though? Right. That's, that's unheard of. Imagine a century ago. Imagine going back even one yeah. century ago and explaining that there are going to be millions of people who are eating so much food that it's killing them. They Could you imagine even... putting somebody in a time machine from 10,000 years ago and showing them your video of deadlifting the world's, <laughs> uh, you know, the world record for women's, you know, heaviest deadlift and then explaining to them how many views that got mm. and why that happened. They would think the world's gone completely insane. Like if you go to a gym today and you see people going there, picking up things, putting them down, running on a treadmill in one spot <laughs> and showing that to a guy from 10,000 years ago, he'd think that the world's gone completely nuts and want to go back, I would think, right? Yeah. Like wasting calories and, and, and energy doing nothing when they would have been spending their time, you know, making sure they had food and protection and shelter. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here that clips from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment. You'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.